Welcome to our online worship on Christ the King Sunday. Most of our online provision from now on will be live streamed services from here in church. But on reflection, we decided that when it's an all age service, the safeguarding and data protection issues were just too complicated to overcome. So we will continue to produce a, a kind of scaled down version of a pre-recorded service when it's an all age service in church. So there will be something for our committed YouTubers. Uh, though, could I also remind you that all our back catalogue, all the, the last year and a half's worth of recorded services are still there to watch on YouTube. And it may well be that there are ones for appropriate days and seasons that you didn't see the first time around that you may well want to watch this year. If you weren't able to be in church last week, thought you might just like to have a look at the stunning banners uh, which we had up in the church for Remembrance Day. These, you'll remember, were made in 2018, the 100th anniversary of the end of the First World War. And they're looking beautiful, aren't they? Also here in church at present, we have a very poignant display of members of our church family who have died over the last 50 years or so. And many of these, many of you will remember. So an opening act of praise. Lord Jesus Christ, we worship you today as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We bring you our praise, we offer our homage, we dedicate our lives to your service. Blessing and honour and glory and might are yours, O Lord, this day and forevermore. We acknowledge you as sovereign over life, the Lord of creation, through whom all things were made, and in whom we live and move and have our being. Blessing and honour and glory and might are yours, O Lord, this day and forevermore. We acknowledge you as sovereign over death, the risen Lord who triumphed over the grave, the resurrection and the life. Through you the door to eternity has been opened, the path to your everlasting kingdom. Blessing and honour and glory and might are yours, O Lord, this day and forever. We acknowledge you as sovereign over evil, the crucified Christ who nailed our sins to the cross, who defeated the powers of darkness, who conquered hatred with love. Blessing and honour and glory and might are yours, O Lord, this day and forevermore. Lord Jesus Christ, we acknowledge you as sovereign over all. Lord of space and time, ruler of the ends of the earth, enthroned in splendour at the right hand of the Father. Blessing and honour and glory and might are yours, O Lord, this day and forevermore. Amen. Ha! 
the whole liturgical cycle of the Christian church, the great festivals and seasons of Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter and Pentecost, are all squeezed into six months of the year between December and June. And it all begins next week on Advent Sunday. Well, this Sunday, like a preface to that great annual retelling of the salvation story, is called the Feast of Christ the King. And never have we been more in need of reminding who the true King is than we are at this moment. So let me read to you the Gospel for Christ the King Sunday. This is from John chapter 18, verses 33 to 37. Pilate then went back into the palace and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. The last 20 months have been the strangest period of our national life that I have lived through life may have returned to something like normal in this country, but the pandemic is far from abating. Some European countries are going back into lockdown. More people are in our church family are ill with coronavirus than at any time so far. And tragically, this week, we are mourning our first COVID death. We're told that the Prime Minister is not ruling out further NPIs, a new acronym to me, non-pharmaceutical interventions. Never have we needed reminding who the true King is more than now. And yet in times of uncertainty and confusion, maybe we can understand Pilate's incredulity. The very idea that this ragged, suspected criminal standing before him was a king must have seemed absurd. As a servant of the Roman Emperor, Pilate knew what a king looked like, and it was nothing like this impoverished preacher, with no rich or influential friends and no army behind him to back him up. Pilate's implied question is this, if you really are a king, what on earth kind of king are you? And it's a good question. What kind of a king is Jesus? Well, many of our scripture-based hymns and songs supply the answer. Very briefly, he is the king of love. The king of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I'm his, and he is mine forever. And this king rules by kindness, forgiveness, sacrifice, not by coercion and fear. Indeed, he lays down his life for those on whom he sets his love and seeks to win our willing devotion to be king of our hearts.
Secondly, he is the king of peace, who doesn't impose dominance by violence and force, but makes peace through his cross. Peace between God and humanity, peace between human and human, and peace within fractured and wounded hearts and lives. He says to Pilate, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest. But now my kingdom is from another place. Thirdly, he is the king of righteousness. This king doesn't need to cheat, bribe or compromise his integrity to get to the top. There's no hint of sleaze in his government. He treats everyone with absolute justice and absolute grace. And finally, he is the king of glory. Pilate would probably have said, all that humi humility, kindness and sacrifice is all very lovely, but it doesn't pose much of a threat to Caesar. And how wrong he would have been. Where is the Roman Empire now, whilst the Church of Christ is alive and well? 2,000 years later, how many followers does Caesar have? And how many does Jesus have? Pilate may have seen only a ragged criminal, but Daniel, John, and many other Bible writers saw one like a son of man, shining like the noonday sun, enthroned above the heavens and the earth. And Isaiah tells us, as we shall hear again in just a few weeks' time, that of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. This king of love, peace, righteousness and glory will reign forever and ever. Love wins. And we've never needed to be reminded of that more than now. How's God going to pull that off? I don't know, but won't it be amazing to watch? And in the meantime, he calls us to be kings and priests, ruling under him with the same strategy of love, humility, sacrifice and integrity. That same strategy by which he will eventually conquer all the nations. So in these times of uncertainty and confusion, times of great trouble in many parts of the world, and times of deep grief for many individuals and families, how good it is to be reminded that the true king is the king of love, the king of peace, the king of righteousness, the king of glory, who shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all the love and faithfulness you show us. We are grateful that you are our Saviour. Please help us listen to you so you can guide us every day. Keep us healthy and safe and help us work to serve you so we can truly say that our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Your creation is suffering from global warming, and we ask that you help each country work together and help make sure we stop the pollution of our air and of our seas. We want to see a planet that is clean and all people are not affected by droughts, rising sea levels and rising temperatures. We ask for your help so we can also reduce our own waste and help the environment to be a better place for us all. We pray for all the people of Afghanistan. We ask that the Taliban respect all their citizens, including all women and girls in their country, 
and that they will be given freedom so that they can go to school and work and contribute to the rebuilding of their nation. We also pray for all refugees from wars and poverty everywhere, that those currently on the Belarus-Poland border are treated well and cared for and that there will be a quick solution to the crisis without violence. We pray for our own nation. We thank you for what you have provided and let us be great, grateful for the blessings we have every day. We thank you for all those working to make our communities better places. We ask that you are with our leaders and they act with fairness and integrity in difficult decisions that have to be made. We thank you for our doctors, nurses, teachers and so many uh, others doing difficult jobs for our benefit. We ask you that you take care of them. We lift up to you those that are suffering at the moment. All those that are bullied and abused, anxious and worried, unwell or grieving. Let us take a few moments to think of those on our own hearts. May they know your love and presence at this difficult time. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God of peace, 
whose son Jesus Christ proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life. Look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both people and nations through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen.